Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and in this video I'm going to compare two little Panasonic cameras, the LX100 Mark II and the GX880-850. Please also consider subscribing to my channel and tap the bell icon down there so you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. And then another thing, I'm a Lumix ambassador and sometimes I review cameras that are not mine, they are on loan from Panasonic, but still I'm the one who decides what I publish in this channel and I'm not getting paid for making these videos. I make these videos so I can share my experiences with you guys. These two cameras are probably not the most obvious two cameras to put head to head. The LX100 Mark II has earned a reputation of being one of the best enthusiast level compact cameras out there, but the GX880 instead is for beginners or somebody who just picked up photography and maybe wants to have something a bit um, more versatile than a phone camera. And by the way, this GX880 is I think a uh, an EU model only but it's very similar to uh, the GX850. What I'm going to say here uh, probably pretty much applies also to GX850 which is available also in the States, in the United States at least I think. But after using the GX880 now for a bit, I think there is a very good reason to put these head to head because they, both of these cameras are extremely uh, portable and compact and I think there are a lot of people who are looking to buy something compact that they can always carry with them, a camera that's always with them every time, everywhere and I think both of these cameras could be that camera. So let's compare these cameras a bit feature by feature and see what comes out. Let's start with the size. Both cameras are pretty com compact and portable, but uh, just uh, comparing the size and the weight, the GX880 is the smaller of the two. Of course the final size of the GX depends on the lens that's mounted on it, but I'm comparing the size here as it is with the kit lens that comes with the camera, the 12 to 32 millimeter uh, zoom lens. Both cameras fits in a large pocket, not in a jeans pocket, but a coat pocket or something, and uh, both are really like nice to carry around all the time. Even if the LX100 is a bit bigger, it's still very nice uh, and uh, compact to carry around almost everywhere, anytime. But I'm gonna give the GX one point uh, for being a little bit smaller with the kit lens. The next up is the ergonomics. And here the winner just has to be the LX100 Mark II because of its really nice and even beautiful retro type controls that lets you see the settings even without turning on the camera. I might be biased, but I really think this and also the Mark I model are the best handling cameras in their class compared to any camera. And this camera also has a viewfinder, which is really handy if you're shooting in bright daylight outside. It lets you see really well what you're doing. Uh, sometimes the rear screen can be a little bit hard to see. But the, also the GX880 is not as bad as it looks at first glance. First of all, it has a tilting screen and even a selfie mode. So if you're a selfie, selfie person, this is um, your choice uh, because um, with the LX you can't really see what you're doing and also the tilting screen is uh, very very handy in many other situations as well. Also if you customize the interface just a bit you will get a lot better user experience out of this camera. What I did, um, I remapped the 4K photo button on top of the camera and now I have the ISO on this button and that helps me a lot. Now I can access uh, pretty much everything I need very quickly. And one more thing, the GX has a small flash always with it 
the Elex also comes with a flash, which I don't have right here, right now, but um, it also comes with a flash, but it's a separate uh, little thing that maybe is not always with you when you need it. But um, in this category, I'm gonna give it to the LX100 Mark uh, II because of its uh, really, really great uh, analog controls. And the next up is the photo features, which are very similar on both cameras. But here the LX100 Mark II has a couple of like extras that are better than the GX880. First of all, the LX100 Mark II has something called a multi-aspect multi uh, sensor. What it means that uh, when you are changing the aspect ratio by sliding this handy little switch on top of the lens, you will get like a real uh, aspect ratio, not just a crop from the from the default maximum or the default uh, aspect ratio of the sensor. The LX100 Mark II also has a shutter, mechanical shutter that goes uh, all the way up to one four thousand of a second. The shutter on the GX only goes to up to one five hundredth of a second and if you need faster shutter speeds than that you have to rely on the electronic shutter which is uh, sometimes problematic if there is a fast moving subject in your uh, picture it can get a little bit like warped it's not an extreme problem or really bad problem but sometimes you may get uh, a bit like funny shapes in your pictures if the subject is moving fast and if you are a jpeg shooter the lx100 mark ii offers one more extra feature and it's the highlight shadow tool that i'm talking about in my video of jpeg shooting it's up there if you want to take a look the highlight shadow tool lets you customize your JPEG output and it can make a difference. So in this category I have to give a, a, a point to the LX100 Mark II because it has a, a little bit like more versatile and better photo features than the GX880. Uh, but this GX880 is not a bad camera. I've had really good results on this camera and I like using this camera too. But uh, the facts are facts and uh, this is the better camera in this category. And the next up is the video features, which again are pretty similar on both cameras. Both can shoot 4K up to 30p. However, on the LX100 Mark II, you can use full manual controls, manual exposure controls also in video. As with the GX880, it's fully automatic all the time. You have the exposure compensation, so you have some control over the brightness of the image, but you can't control the shutter speed or aperture. But to be able to take full advantage of the manual controls um, on the LX100, you pretty much need an adjustable ND filter on your lens to be able to get the right shutter speed and to avoid that jerky movement that you get uh, if the shutter speed is too high. Both cameras make really nice looking video footage, so in that sense they are pretty much equal. But I have to give a point here also to the LX100 Mark II because um, it allows you a full manual control also uh, in video. And the next one is the image quality, very important. The GX880 uses the already old 16 megapixel sensor that can be found inside many, many Micro Four Thirds cameras. The LX100 Mark II instead uses the newer 20 megapixel sensor that also can be found in some of the newer Micro Four Thirds cameras. However, the LX100 Mark II only uses a 17 megapixel portion of the, uh, of the sensor because of the multi-aspect feature. So at the end of the day, 
there is no like a real world practical difference when it comes to the image quality or the sensor performance of these cameras. Both deliver very good uh, micro four thirds image quality and uh, in this category I'm gonna give one point to each camera because there is no difference. And then the lens or the lenses very big part of the image quality and very important part of any camera. The LX100 Mark II has a fixed lens and there's nothing you can do about it. The lens is very versatile, 24 to 75 equivalent angle of view with the fastest aperture from f1.7 to f2.8 depending on the on the focal length. It's a pretty good lens but um, if you want something wider or something longer, there's nothing you can do about it. You're stuck with this lens, with this camera. The GX880 instead is a system camera with interchangeable lenses. You can mount any lens on this camera. Even uh, my favorite like a uh, Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7 and uh, one thing I want to point out here is that um, if you are using a lens with aperture ring, you get one extra like uh, uh, control dial on your camera, which can be really helpful in some situations. But there's also another thing I want to point out. Uh, both these cameras rely only on optical image stabilizer. And if you mount a non-stabilized lens on the GX, like this lens, the 15mm f1.7, you will lose the image stabilizer altogether. Which may not be a, a big downside if you're shooting in bright daylight, but in low light situations, an image stabilizer is a big like upside or, or a good feature to have. But in this category, I'm gonna give it to the GX because it can use any lens, even this uh, Noctichron 42.5 mm f1.2 lens. This is uh, probably a bit extreme already, but it's a fully functional combination and usable. So in this category, I'm gonna give one point to the GX880 because it can take any lens. And the last but not the least, the price. Also a very important factor. The price of the GX880 is roughly half of the price of the LX100 Mark II. And even if you get another lens for the GX880, you would still be probably at around the same price as the LX100 Mark II. Depending on the lens, of course. So I'm giving a point to the GX880 here because it's so much cheaper. But I also have to say that if you are an advanced photographer, a little bit experienced photographer, you probably wouldn't be very happy with the GX880 as your only camera, even with that second lens. But if you already have some Micro Four Thirds gear, maybe another camera body and some lenses, then the GX880 would make a, or might make a lot of sense if you're looking for another compact camera body that you can carry anywhere with you. And then you could use those uh, lenses you already have. But if you are an experienced photographer looking for uh, like, an, uh, like one camera that can satisfy your photography needs, I think it's hard to beat the LX100 Mark II. This camera is such a pleasure to use because of the great analog controls and the only like downside is that you can't change the lens. But if you're happy with the 24 to 75 equivalent angle of view, then this would be a great camera for any uh, advanced or experienced photographer. And the final score is here. As you can see, it's pretty even. Both cameras are great, but maybe for different uh, users. I hope this was useful for you guys. And before you go, you may want to watch these two videos 
and uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.